Over the last decade, the Raspberry Pi has rapidly become one of my favourite computer platforms of all time, and I've probably got more of them around the house than I actually know what to do with, but I've got to say I'm totally in love with the latest all-in-one Raspberry Pi 400. This powerful little computer in a keyboard is a real throwback to the machines of my youth, like the Commodore 64, the Spectrum and the Amiga, and that's actually one of the main things I love to do with it, emulating classic systems. Now, I've already done a video turning this into the ultimate Amiga emulation machine, but I wondered how well this would fare trying to turn it into a Windows 98 PC. And over the years, I've seen various actually quite complicated guides to getting Windows 98 emulated on the Pi, usually taking several hours and then getting very mixed results if you even manage to get it working at all. But recently, I've seen a couple of guides from people like Daniel Repka, who's been demoing Windows 95 and Windows 98 on the Raspberry Pi using DOSBox and Dosbian, um, which I'll probably explore in a future video very soon and a guy that was actually in the official Raspberry Pi magazine, Magpie, recently, which is actually what I'm gonna use as the starting point and really basing this video on, as quite usefully they've actually made a few config files and scripts, which will make this entire process a lot easier. So I figure we may as well go from there. Although, I didn't actually manage to get their instructions working properly as it looks like there are some errors in their instructions and their config, which I will show you how to fix, and as a result, managed to get Windows 98 running on your Raspberry Pi. Now, I am going to be demoing this on the Pi 400. I mean, it should work the same on the standard Raspberry Pi 4 as well, but really, that is kind of the minimum configuration. I wouldn't try to get this working on something like a Raspberry Pi 2 as um, I just don't really think it's going to have the CPU power. And getting started is actually really simple. All you'll need is your Raspberry Pi with Resbian installed on your SD card and booted up. And of course, we're gonna need a Windows 98 CD image and a boot floppy. Now you can find these all over the net today. And you know, it came out 23 years ago. Microsoft really don't care about Windows 98 anymore. You can grab them from archive.org or the brilliant WinWorld website, which is where I got mine from. You can get the OEM full image of Windows 98 SC off here and the boot disk as well. Now it does say that the OEM version doesn't actually need the boot disk on a real PC, but it does for this guide, so definitely grab them both. And you'll probably find that you can't actually unarchive the 7-zip archives on Raspbian by default. So what you'll need to do is head into the preferences and then into add and remove software. And in here, if you search for 7-zip, you will see there are a couple of files that we can install, the uh, P7 zip packages. Now there are two here, I installed them both. You might not need both of them, but you know, they're really small and it can't do any harm. Uh, enter your password, install those, and then you'll find after that, you can unzip the images that you downloaded. And what we'll need to do is uh, copy them into our home folder. Now for the configuration files that we downloaded from Magpie's GitHub, we will actually need to give these specific names for it to find them. So what you'll need to do is rename the CD image to win98.iso and then make sure that is in your home directory. And the floppy image will need to be called win98boot.img. And again, make sure that's in the home folder. And of course, we are gonna need those config files from Magpie Magazine, and you can get these from their GitHub. As I mentioned, it was in uh, issue 96 from uh, September. And if you download the zip file, and then you can extract it and take the win98.conf file and uh, the install file as well, and make sure you've copied these again into your home folder. And while we're in here, like I mentioned, there are some errors in here, so we need to quickly edit them as I found the hard disk configuration is wrong for the rest of their instructions. And um, when you try them as they are, Windows 98 will actually fail to install. So what you need to do is open each one of them by uh, double clicking and it will open in the mousepad editor. And then if you go right to the bottom, all you need to do is change the hard disk parameters in each file to read 512, 63, 64, 1023. So do this in both config files. You just need to change that 130 to a 64 in both of them, save them, and then they should work just fine. 
And Magpie have also put together a CD image with some third-party freeware software and some new drivers on as well. So definitely worth grabbing this. And I'll, of course, link it up in the video description and uh, a link to their full article if you want to go a little bit more in-depth as they do stuff like setting up networking and all that kind of thing. If you get this, again, move it into your home folder. And everything I've mentioned here, you need to make sure that the, um, the names are case-sensitive as well. So pay attention to capital letters. It is important. It does, it does need them in the config file. So now we are ready to go. Now we'll need to open the terminal and then copy the following commands one by one. Now to save you typing them all out, I will put them in the description of this video. What you need to do is wait until one of them's finished and then move on to the next instruction. And be warned, this is probably gonna take quite a while. It took me around 30 minutes for me to install and make everything. So all you need to do is copy them one by one from the video description, wait for it to complete and then move on to the next part. And 30 minutes later, we've now installed it. Now what we need to do is type CD, I believe that's a tilde, <laughs> a little symbol, and it will take you back to your home folder. And then if you type in DOSBox hyphen X or one word, it should then launch. Now while you're in here, Let's quickly make the Windows 98 hard disk image that we're going to be using. Now we're going to go with a 2 gigabyte disk as per the guide in Magpie, which you know will be more than enough for plenty of games and software. So again, you can copy this from the video description. We need to type in IMG make, all one word, space win98hd.img, space minus t, space HD underscore two gig space minus no FS and make sure that the naming is the same as the config file. So we call it there win 98 HD. Pay attention to the case again dot IMG. Otherwise, the config file is not going to find it. And then we can type in exit to quit DOSBox. And then we need to load it up again using the Windows 98 install config. So again, you can copy it from the video description and then it should load the Windows 98 boot disk. You need to hit the first option and the Windows 98 installer will begin. And when you get to it, say yes to large hard disk support and then it will probably do a reboot. And again, this will take quite a long time. Now, if you're used to installing, you know, Windows 10, which works as writing an image file to your hard disk, which is a bit quicker, this will seem very slow. But this is, you know, how long it took back in the day. In my experience, expect to wait at least 40 minutes to um, maybe two hours at the most. Now you can actually speed this up a little bit by selecting the turbo option from the DOSBox X menu. It will give you a little bit of a speed boost, but make sure you turn that off when it's actually booted. Otherwise things go a bit funky. So just work your way through the Windows 98 installer, then, you know, go and have dinner, watch a movie, take the dog out, have a bath. And then when the install is nearly done, you will see this message asking you to remove floppy disks. Now, at this stage, we're going to actually change to the Windows 98 main configuration file. So we don't need the disks, obviously, and we're almost ready to boot. So what you need to do is close DOSBox X by clicking on the Windows close gadget. It will give you a warning that you're quitting a running machine, but you know, there's no problem doing that here. And then go back into the terminal and we need to launch DOSBox X again with the other config file. So you can press up on the keyboard to go into the command history and then just edit this to win98.conf and hit return. And DOSBox X will launch again and now we're getting ready to run Windows 98 for the first time. Now at this stage, you'll also be asked to enter your Windows product key that I'm sure you've got on your official Windows 98 CD from Microsoft. Although if that's maybe hidden away in the garage or a drawer and you can't quite find it at the moment, you can of course just type it in to a popular search engine and I'm sure several will appear on the front page, apparently. And after this, Windows 98 will begin to set up the drivers. Now again, there's going to be a bit of a wait here, probably around 15 minutes for it to do all its magic. And it will probably ask you about a network card. Now we haven't actually set this up to support networking, but you know, if you follow the full guide in Magpie magazine, they do all that in there. Uh, but here you can just change the IRQ to 10 to keep it out of the way of other devices. And then you can safely ignore it after that. If you do want to set up networking though, Magpie's article goes a lot more in depth. Although I'll be honest, I couldn't get it working on the Pi 400. So that's why I ignored it, but you might have more luck. And to be fair, there's not really much you can do on the internet with Windows 98 in 2021. 
and after a bit of a wait, you will land on the Windows 98 desktop. Congratulations, you've successfully installed Windows 98 on a Raspberry Pi. You can feel very proud of yourself. But what can you actually do with it and how well does it run? And maybe there are a few little tweaks that we can do to make it run a little better. We'll have a look at all that next. Now, just before we do that, I wanted to take a very quick moment to give a massive thank you to this video sponsor, our very good friends at Brilliant. Now, Brilliant lets you see maths and science in a completely new way, especially if you're someone like me who tends to learn in a very visual way. They help you see concepts visually and interact with them. And then they will post questions that really get you thinking. And I love how their courses are laid out like a story and you can do them in small digestible parts. And then there are no grades. All you do is pick a course that you're interested in. If you get something wrong, that is completely fine. They explain why in a really useful explanation so you can learn from it next time. And obviously I've always been fascinated by computers, even since I was a small child, you know, having parents who worked in the industry, it was really part of my DNA. So being able to learn about things like AI and neural networks, I found just fascinating. And Brilliant is great to experience with your own kids as their course library has got something for everyone from ages 10 to 110. Whatever your experience from beginner to advanced, they will take you on a guided tour where you'll get to think, become a better problem solver and enjoy new challenges each week. And it's so easy to jump in and get started right now. In fact, I've got an amazing deal that if you're quick and you're one of the first 200 people to use my link, brilliant.org forward slash Dan Wood, you will get 20% off your annual subscription. So claim it now, help out the channel, thanks to our friends at Brilliant. So we've got Windows 98 all up and running, but what about getting third-party software onto it? Well, of course, you can find CD images and floppy images of software from the era all over the internet. And getting those running in here is actually really simple. All you need to do is add them into the config file. Now, there are menus on DOSBox X that are apparently supposed to allow you to insert images, but I tried this on several machines. I couldn't get them working. The way I did it is to go into the config file and then just type the name of the CD image, providing it's in your home folder, and then it will be there when you boot it up. And then, of course, you can just do that temporarily while you install it and remove it next time. Now, performance of Windows 98 in here is to be honest, quite sluggish at the moment, but we can give that quite a bit of a boost by lowering your screen resolution inside Raspbian. So if we go into the preferences and put our screen mode down to 720p, and then if we run DOSBox X in full screen mode, either from the menu or you can hold down the function F12 and F key from the keyboard, and then you'll find that in 720p, it actually runs at quite a usable speed, probably on par with a late 486 or an early Pentium. It's definitely usable. And I've installed a few tools and games from the era. I mean, for example, you can check out Office 97 and uh, see your old mate Clip It again. And did you actually know that was his name? It was Clip It, never Clippy. There's a Mandela effect. And I must be honest, I do actually really like this era of Microsoft Office before they came up with that horrible ribbon interface. It feels like you can find everything really easy in here and it feels a lot comfier and the speed is actually really decent and you could use this to get word processing done without any distractions just fine today. And of course, files that you make with it can be saved and then loaded into Google Docs and modern versions of Microsoft Office. Now, of course, you can't have a PC of this era without playing some Doom. And using Doom 95, the later Windows version of it, actually plays quite well in here. Now, admittedly, you do get the odd dropped frame running it in its default configuration, but it is certainly playable, and you can speed it up by making the window a little bit smaller and playing with detail options. And even though it does feel a bit sick to be, you know, downgrading a 25-year-old game to play it smoothly today, this is probably smoother than the first PC I played Doom on back in the day, I must admit. Now, later games like the superb Pinball Arcade from 1998, I've got to say, don't run all that great on default high detail options, and you're really going to struggle with things like FMV intros that look a bit more like slideshows when you try and watch them. And some of the more simple levels in the game are playable, but the more demanding ones I found run really slowly. Although, <laughs> I've got to say, it does make playing the game a lot easier. But it does run acceptably if you put it on the lowest detail settings. But really, you're going to find that it's best to stick to games from that kind of 486 early Pentium era, like the mid-90s, for best results on here. 
And it's also quite nostalgic revisiting old software that you used to run daily, even if it's just for a quick glimpse at how much things have changed in the last couple of decades. Although that said, I do still use Winamp on my Windows 10 machine today, so probably not all that much has changed for me. So in conclusion, really this is more of a curiosity and an experiment. When I mentioned to someone that I was going to be doing this, installing Windows 98 on a Raspberry Pi, the first thing they said was, why? Well really the answer is, you know, because you can. Now sure, there are much better ways to emulate Windows 98 um, using something like, you know, VMware on your modern PC, or I could use my original hardware. I've got a permanent Pentium 4 Windows 98 PC, always ready to go in my office for a quick blast of nostalgia. But it does prove if you want to install and experience Windows 98 on your Raspberry Pi, it can be done. So if you want to give it a go, I'd be interested to hear how it went for you and uh, maybe any tips you've got for speeding this up. You know, I'm not an expert, I just followed a guide to do this. And of course, all the links to follow along and uh, the software and all of the instructions will be in the video description. Thank you for watching. And just a quick reminder that I do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast where each week we keep you up to date on what's been happening in the world of retro and we interview an industry veteran on each episode. You can get it every Friday from your favourite podcast client or ask your smart speaker or head to our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, here's another couple of videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.